Written in the Euganian Hills, North Italy, P.B. Shelley. There are notes in the back of the book. The leading idea of this beautiful description of a day's landscape in Italy is expressed with an obscurity not unfrequent with its author. It appears to be on the voyage of life are many moments of pleasure given by the sight of nature, who has power to heal even the worldliness and the uncharity of man. Written in the Euganian Hills, North Italy. Many a green isle needs must be in the deep wide sea of misery, or the mariner, one and one, never thus could voyage on, day and night, and a night and day, drifting on his dreary way, with the solid darkness black closing round his vessel's track, whilst above the sunless sky, big with clouds, hangs heavily, and behind the tempest fleet hurries on with lightning feet, riding sail and cord and plank, Till the ship has almost drank death from the oar brimming deep, and sinks down, down like that sleep when the dreamer seems to be weltering through eternity, and the dim low line before of a dark and distant shore still recedes as ever still, longing with divided will. But no power to seek or shun, he is ever drifted on or the unreposing wave to the haven of the grave. A many flowering islands lie in the waters of wide agony. To such a one this morn was led, my bark by soft winds piloted. Mid the mountains Euganian, I stood listening to the pan, with which the legion brooks did hail the sun's uprise majestical. Gathering round with wings all hoar, through the dewy mist they soar like grey shades till the eastern heaven bursts and then as clouds of even flecked with fire and azure lie in the unfathomable sky so their plumes of purple grain starred with drops of golden rain gleam above the sunlight woods as in silent multitudes on the morning's fitful gale through the broken mist they sail and the vapors cloven and gleaming follow down the dark steep streaming till all is bright and clear and still round a solitary hill beneath is spread like a green sea the waveless plain of lombardy bounded by the vaporous air islanded by cities fair underneath day's azure eyes ocean's nursling venice lies a peopled labyrinth of walls, amphitrites, destined halls, which her hoary, which her hoary sire now paves with his blue and beaming waves. Lo, the sun upsprings behind, broad red radiant, half reclined, on the level quivering line of the water's crystal line. And before that chasm of light, as within a furnace bright, column, tower, and dome, and spire, shine like obelisks of fire, pointing with inconstant motion from the altar of dark ocean to the sapphire-tinted skies as the flames of sacrifice from the marble shrines did rise, as to pierce the dome of gold where Apollo spoke of old. Sun girt city, thou hast been ocean's child and then his queen. Now is come a darker day, and thou soon must be his prey. If the power that raised thee here, hallow so thy watery beer, Alice drear, ruin them, then then now, with thy conquest branded brow. Stooping to the slave of slaves, from thy throne among the waves, Wilt thou be, when the sea mew flies as once before it flew, or thine isles depopulate, and all is in its ancient state, save where many a palace gate, with green sea flowers overgrown, like a rock of ocean's own, topples o'er the abandoned sea, as the tides change sullenly, 
The fisher on his watery way, wandering at the close of day, will spread his sail and seize his oar, till he pass the gloomy shore, lest thy dead should from their sleep, bursting o'er the starlight deep. Lead a rapid mask of death o'er the waters of his path. Noon descends around me now, tis the noon of autumn's glow, when a soft and purple mist, like a vaporous amethyst, or an air dissolved star, mingling light and fragrance far, from the curved horizon's bound to the point of heaven's pearl profound, fills the overflowing sky and the plains that silent lie underneath. The leaves unsodden where the infant frost has trodden with his morning winged feet whose bright print is gleaming yet and the red and golden vines piercing with their trellised lines the rough dark skirted wilderness the dun and the bladed grass no less pointing from this hoary tower in the windless air the flower glimmering at my feet the line of the olive sandaled Apennine in the south dimly islanded, and the Alps whose snows are spread high between the clouds and the sun, and of living things each one, and my spirit, which so long darkened this swift stream of song, interpenetrated lie by the glory of the sky, be it love, light, harmony, odor, or the soul of all which from heaven like dew doth fall, or the mind which feeds this verse, peopling the lone universe. Noon descends, and afternoon, autumn's evening meets me soon. Leaving the infantine moon, and that one star, which to her almost seems to minister, Half the crimson light she brings from the sunset's radiant springs, and the soft dreams of the morn, which like winged wings had borne, to that silent isle which lies mid remembered agonies, the frail bark of this lone being passed to other sufferers fleeing, and its ancient pilot pain sits beside the helm again. Other flowering isles must be in the sea of life and agony. Other spirits float and flee o'er that gulf. Even now, perhaps, on some rock the wild wave wraps. With folding wings they waiting sit for my bark to pilot it. To some calm and a blooming cove where for me and those I love may a windless bower be built far from passion, pain, and guilt in a dell mid lawny hills which the wild sea murmur fills and soft sunshine and the sound of old forests echoing round and the light and smell divine of all flowers that breathe and shine we may live so happy there that the spirits of the air envying us may even entice to our healing paradise the polluting multitude but their rage would be subdued by that clime divine and calm, and the winds whose wings rain balm on the uplifted soul and leaves, under which the bright sea heaves, while each breathless interval in their whisperings musical, the inspired soul supplies with its own deep melodies, and the love which heals all strife, circling like the breath of life. All things in that sweet abode, with its own mild brotherhood, they, not it, would change, and soon every sprite beneath the moon would repent its envy vain, and the earth grow young again.